There have been many influential people throughout Kansas history. We've had famous cowboys, Indian chiefs, sheriffs, and robbers. One of the most famous of the native Kansans is Dwight David Eisenhower. Not only was he born and raised in Kansas, but his presidential library is located in Abilene, Kansas. Eisenhower was a very influential person, not only through Kansas history, but American history as well. He was a key player in many strategic military operations and played a large role in World War II. Even though he went on to do bigger and better things for our country, Eisenhower will forever be known as a Kansan. Ida Stover and David Eisenhower met at Lane University in Lecompton, Kansas, where they were married. Dwight David Eisenhower was born on October 14, 1890. Dwight was a third of seven sons born to David and Ida. When Dwight was only 18 months old, David moved his family back to Abilene. It was in Abilene that he had a job offer at the Bell Springs Creamery. Life in small-town Abilene was full of adventures for the handsome young Dwight Eisenhower. Abilene was once known to be a cow town only five years prior, so Dwight was obsessed with stories of the old Wild West days. This fascination of the American West would stay with Dwight forever. Back in Dwight's early years, a high school education was considered by most to be only for the rich. However, all of the Eisenhower boys graduated and were pushed by their parents to attend college. Dwight worked at the Bell Springs Creamery for two years after high school, supporting his brother Edgar through college. Dwight decided he wanted to enlist himself into the military. He was accepted into West Point. While at West Point, Eisenhower used the frustration of military life to succeed on the football field. He was hailed as a star, but was disappointed when a series of knee injuries brought his stardom to a halt. In reaction to this setback, Eisenhower declined in school and accumulated a list of wrongdoings. However, Eisenhower soon used these negatives and became a leader and served as junior varsity football coach as well as a yell leader. He ended up graduating in the upper half of his class in 1915. While at his first post in Texas, he met 18-year-old Mamie Geneva Dowd. On July 1, 1916, only nine months after meeting each other, Dwight and Mamie were married. He and Mamie became parents in 1917 to a young, healthy son they nicknamed Icky. The Eisenhowers suffered tragedy when Icky died suddenly of scarlet fever at the young age of three. Eisenhower took this loss and put his energy into his career. He felt satisfaction in training the World War I recruits for overseas duty. Eisenhower served as executive officer to General Fox Connor from 1922 to 1924. Connor became comfortable with the role of mentor to the young Eisenhower. Eisenhower engrossed himself in influential works of history, military science, and philosophy. Eisenhower, Thanks to Connor, was accepted into the Command and General Staff School at Fort Leavenworth, Kansas. The General Staff School was an elite Army graduate school. Eisenhower graduated first in his class of 245. Eisenhower soon reported to the War Department. His assignment was to make a plan to mobilize manpower and materials for the Army. He was then transferred to serve as military chief aide under Douglas MacArthur in 1933. Due to his abilities with many different responsibilities, he was promoted to Major General in March of 1942. He arrived in England in 1942 to build cooperation among the Allies as commanding general. Eisenhower himself planned the land, sea, and air forces that would become more commonly known as D-Day. In December 1943, Eisenhower was named Supreme Commander of Allied Expeditionary Forces. June 6, 1944, also known as D-Day, was the beginning of the end for the war in Europe. After D-Day, Eisenhower was promoted to General of the Army. In May of 1945, Eisenhower was promoted to Military Governor. Eisenhower quickly became the main focus of speeches, grand parades, and the eye of many admirers as nations throughout Europe honored him. He returned to Abilene for a parade like the town had never seen before. Eisenhower was appointed and promoted to many different positions for his role of ending the World War. He was selected as Chief of Staff of the U.S. Army in 1945. He was then selected as President of Columbia University until 1950. He then went on to become the first Supreme Allied Commander of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, which is today known as NATO. He turned his vision for Europe and the U.S. into a reality. Eisenhower announced his candidacy for the Republican nomination for the President of the United States in his hometown of Abilene, Kansas. Eisenhower was elected the 34th President on November 4, 1952. He was re-elected to a second term by a larger margin than his first win. His words of peace and prosperity became popular during his years as President. He accomplished many things while in office. He ended the Korean War and he worked to contain communism. The economy was strong and created solid economic growth throughout Eisenhower's time in office. 
There was little inflation and a very low unemployment rate. Eisenhower expanded Social Security and increased the minimum wage. He developed the Department of Health, Education, and Welfare, the Interstate Highway, and NASA. Alaska and Hawaii became the 49th and 50th states to enter the Union during his presidency. President Eisenhower bid farewell to his office on January 17, 1961. Eisenhower looked forward to a much-needed retirement. He enjoyed golf and painting. He raised livestock and took to gardening. He often spent afternoons with Mamie reading and painting and playing cards. He also enjoyed cooking. When winter came around, the Eisenhowers retreated to Palm Desert, California, where they owned a home. During his last year alive, Eisenhower lived at Walter Reed Army Hospital. Mamie lived with Dwight in a small room at the hospital. Dwight D. Eisenhower passed away on March 28, 1969. Eisenhower was honored in a state funeral in Washington, D.C., and was honored with a full military funeral in his hometown of Abilene on April 2nd. He was buried in a modest chapel on the grounds of the Eisenhower Center, just as he had wanted it. Although Dwight D. Eisenhower faced many challenges throughout his life, he made the best of what he had and became a national figure for American history. He will forever be known as the man with a plan. He was a beloved husband, father, and president. He was born in Abilene and eventually returned home to stay.